Coming up live on LiveWire, we've got a great show for you today. We're going to learn about some things. We're going to learn about some place called Tubman House, which is a wonderful service. It's not just a drop-in place for homeless people. It's a training program. At any rate, Grace Losher is here, and we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about also support for low-income folks, solar panels on their houses. How could, and there's, they have an event coming up that you can go to. Stay tuned for Live Wire right after this. Grace uh, Losher, you um, live in Sacramento? I do, I do, yes. And you do things in Sacramento. I do lots of things in Sacramento. Yes, you do. <laughs> what, tell me, what is it, I mean, you were walking down the street one day and you thought, gosh, I think I'll work for mm, a number of organizations that uh, are in need of me, and uh, you work for Tubman House. I do, Which yes. we're going to talk about. Yes. Right? That's right. <laughs> But you also kind of uh, activist for the homeless. I am. Yes. 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 That's right. <laughs> and uh, you work in other things, uh, which is really interesting. You have a kind of like a um, handful of uh, social drives in you. Yes, a lot of different, um, a lot of different interests and passions, kind of all revolving around um, homelessness and the homeless community in Sacramento. Have you ever been homeless? No, I have not. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying you, everybody has to be homeless who works with the homeless, sure. but I, we were talking about you um, uh, actually doing some interesting things in a sleeping bag on the city hall lawn. Yes, yes. So um, a few months back, there was um, an, an ongoing movement called the Right to Rest movement. And um, many of us were protesting an ordinance in Sacramento called mm -hmm. the Anti-Camping Ordinance. And this ordinance um, makes it illegal for anyone, specifically homeless folks, um, to sleep outside on the streets. Mm -hmm. But Sacramento is short about a thousand shelter beds. Um, so what are those thousand people supposed to do each night. So um, there was a large number of us who for quite a while um, occupied a stretch outside of City Hall and slept out there and um, camped, or as we would say, lived out there for a little bit, um, just protesting this really unfair ordinance that we felt our city shouldn't have. Has the city changed it? The city has not changed it. No, we've had lots of discussions. Um, we've made our voices known uh -huh. at uh, city council meetings, um, did lots of advocacy, but no, they continue to okay, keep the well, ordinance in place. Change sometimes takes a little time. It but, sure does. But you keep pushing, right? Well, we keep pushing. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. And one of the ways you keep pushing is also to, on the other hand, there is an organization, this Tubman House. Yes. Is it cost 20 to get in? <laughs> no, no. So Tubman House is an 18-month transitional living program mm -hmm. um, for homeless parenting youth. So this means youth being ages 18 to 22 oh. um, who are experiencing homelessness and who also are parenting. So they have children of their own or they're pregnant. So, so quite a mixture going on. And then they can stay at Tubman House um, and live with us, live in community, and then go through kind of our program and our support for up to 18 months. Ah, yeah. and support, mm -hmm. and support. Yes. It's not just a kind of, okay, go in there, there's your, your room. Exactly, yeah, and that's the key component really is um, we, we believe in offering, we, we only serve um, eight families at a time, so it's mm -hmm. small, um, and we live in two houses in community, and we really try to replicate this idea of a home and a family. We have community meals, um, we have uh, community game nights and things like that, and, and we spend our time um, together really just trying to um, kind of learn what it means to navigate through adulthood as well as navigating all the complications of experiencing homelessness, experiencing poverty, the welfare system, uh, Medi-Cal, all sorts of things like that. Um, and so the service part is really uh, the key component that we're not just a shelter or so a drop-in So it's also a learning situation. So how do you find uh, um, in any given group of uh, four people uh, 
Look at the tree moved. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, people who are predisposed to learn. Mm. So, well, I guess, could you rephrase that question? Yeah, sure. I could say that, um, so, I mean, part of uh, the things that happen to people who are mm -hmm. homeless mm -hmm. is, is that they um, experience poverty, mm -hmm. racism, mm -hmm. sexism, uh, community mm -hmm. uh, disenchantment. So they have a, a feeling about giving mm -hmm. up. They're, sure. they're, they don't have the drive to give up. And I noticed I read all your docs, mm -hmm. and you know it talked about meetings for leadership and uh, finding these positive qualities in you to continue to get going. So I mean, it must be um, tough, tough to to find the keys to the you know your your own personal drive. Yeah, exactly. And you know I'm. Um privileged to work with a, a specific um, subset of our homeless population, this uh -huh. transitional aged youth, which I think is a really exciting time for anyone, whether you're experiencing homelessness or not. You know, yeah, 18, yeah, yeah. 19, 20, um, you're at the height of your youth, kind of exploring and figuring out what you want to do with your life. And so I actually don't see um, that these youth are lacking drive. I see that they're lacking support. And mm. so oftentimes it's um, less of an effort to kind of galvanize, and it's more of an effort to rally around as a village and offer that support that um, they're more perhaps affluent counterparts were blessed enough to have and yeah, that they yeah. didn't. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I think that's uh, uh, a, uh, an interesting uh, concept of how you reach uh, and say, here you can, you, you can have a life. Absolutely, because our, our welfare systems are set up um, oftentimes to kind of support a, a future that says, here, you can have a minimum wage job um, and you can have a, a small one bedroom apartment and likely some form of lifelong dependency on the system. And mm. so we're here to say, uh, no, your dreams and your aspirations can actually be so much larger than that. And um, we're here to give you that push that most people would get from their parents or their teachers or things like that. But um, they were perhaps lacking that person to believe in them and to tell them that they can uh, have enormous dreams and ambitions. You brought some slides. Let's have a look at those slides and see. See, are these uh, slides of um, the, the Tubman House and what's happening? Do you know? Um, so, so the they're mystery, mystery slides. slides. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Okay, so right. yes, this is Tubman House at one of our um, community events. We have a harvest dinner every year, and we have our group of current residents and staff come together, and then we also have graduates from our program. People have been through the program and still um, come around and consider Tubman House a home, and we get together and have uh -huh. these events. Oh, I like it. Yep. Yeah, this is us at a, a going away party for one of our staff members, uh -huh. um, and just kind of celebrating those moments. And do people, when they graduate, oh, look, what's that? Oh, <laughs> this is us on Easter. Um, we had an Easter egg hunt, and we really make it a point to celebrate um, traditions with a lot of the families and have uh, the young parents kind of learn how to enjoy these traditions and pass them on to their children as they often um, didn't have when they were growing up. Yeah. Yeah, and that's us again after another community meal outside of one of our houses. So is there someone who plans all these good things? Oh, what's that? Yeah, that that's barriers me. <laughs> to breaking. Yes, um, that's me teaching a class at our newest program, the Creation District, which is an arts-based program um, to bring together youth from all different kinds of privileged backgrounds and kind of break down that barrier. Wow. Yes, and this is our um, annual beach trip. And we're really big also in believing that it's just as important uh, for youth to get to experience things like seeing the ocean for the first time and climbing a mountain as it is to sign up for Medi-Cal and uh, go through the housing <laughs> yeah. system. Um, this is another picture from the Creation District, our new program. And this is one of our summer camp programs that we offer during the summer. And about half the kids um, will pay full price. And then the other half, based on need, will be scholarshiped either from local um, homeless organizations for families or low-income programs or things like that. Wow. Yes. Whoa. Is this the, the whole group? This is the whole group, yes. I see. <laughs> Two houses? Um, yes, yeah, so we have two houses and eight residents at a time. Oh, and, I see. Yeah, and, lar and you're in one of the large ones there, right? Yes, exactly. And our services actually take place in our houses. Um, so we don't go to an office. Um, and we try to really get away from the sort of traditional cold case management feel. That's us on the front steps of one of our homes. Mm -hmm. And we really try to um, 
just embrace this idea of a home and we don't dress up when we're working uh, with our youth and we just try to have a, a really real um, relationship with them. Oh, that's very cool. I yeah. like that. So um, is there um, like, a, like a team of people who are not homeless, but they are the, uh, like yourself, a, a volunteer or, or a paid uh, service person to deal with like training and the like? Mm -hmm. So our staff is really small. Um, for most nonprofits and um, homeless programs in Sacramento, they have a, a much more extensive um, staff. There's only about, I think, now maybe eight of us on staff. Uh -huh. um, and so we have uh, currently our largest number, we have three um, youth development coaches. And those are people who work every day with our current residents um, and do anything from helping them learn to drive a car to going to their first college class with them um, to being there with them at 3 a.m. if they give birth to a child and, and they're in labor. And this um, happens, right? And this happens. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. Um, and yeah, and I've had that great privilege of experiencing these moments um, with our youth. And so that's kind of uh, the team that's there every day with them. And then we have house directors who live in the homes with them and I sort see. of like a college RA. And yeah, they're yeah. there um, for those other moments. And then our executive director and our child care staff. Okay. Yes. And if people want to learn more about Tubman House, mm -hmm. What do they do? Uh, so you can go onto our website. It's um, www.wakingthevillage.org. Waking the village. Exactly. No yes. dots in between. Yep. Nope. And then um, you can also feel free to email me, and I often coordinate some of that. And so my email is grace at wakingthevillage.org. Um, and there's opportunities uh, to get involved, to come to events, to help fundraise, and um, yeah, explore ways. So, to are there uh, some of the events open to the public? Yes, yes. Um, oftentimes, for that specific program, Tubman House, we try to keep it sort of um, small and private. We do have some of our residents fleeing domestic violence and things like that. So, we don't often have a ton of people coming in to volunteer and things like that. Yeah, sure. But we do larger um, community outreach events uh, specifically through our newer program, the Creation District, um, and offer opportunities to get everyone kind of involved in the same space. Great. Grace yeah. Losher, thank you so much for coming to mm -hmm. talk to me about this. Thank you, Ray. Power to the people. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> All right, well, we got to move along here. We have got some other guests, and we want to thank you so much for coming to talk to us, Grace, Great. and I'll uh, be back after some important messages with Livewire. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. You're very intelligent, Susan, but not smart. You lived your life so much in fantasy that reality never had a chance. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to be free. to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are.
yeah, it's called Grid Alternatives, and it's uh, there's a couple of people here from the organization. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. What, I mean, it's interesting to title it, but it's really about energy and providing uh, energy in California for everyone, right? Yeah, so, so what we're doing here is, um, so we're a national nonprofit, and we provide solar for low-income families. So you're a national nonprofit, so this yeah. exists elsewhere. Yeah. And other places. Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah, we have offices throughout California, uh -huh. so um, starting up in Chico down to San Diego, and then uh, we have other offices in New York, D.C., uh -huh. uh, Colorado, Nicaragua, um, and we Whoop. also have a tribal the state program. of Nicaragua. Oh, <laughs> the country. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So good, good. And this is all meant to uh, really have an impact on energy, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, because well, so we work specifically um, with low-income families, and so the services that we provide, especially in Sacramento County there's absolutely no cost to the families. Mm -hmm. um, and so like our goal is really to be able to help families be able to save money. You're giving energy away free? Yeah, well, the sun is giving the that. Sun. <laughs> the sun is doing that. But, um, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but what other uh, source of energy has uh, been turned over for uh, profit of people with big stocks? Yeah, well, well luckily, luckily we're um, state funded, so the state's providing most of um, our funding, and so that's why we're able to do our services for like absolutely no cost for the families. Really? Yeah. Okay, so tell me, uh, a walk me through what a typical low-income family would do to get solar cells on their ho uh, house and their bill <laughs> shrunk. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, so first, uh, they would <laughs> well, first they would call in, or they could visit our website. Uh -huh. um, but so basically. One aspect is they have to qualify by income, so um, it varies depending on the household size. But you know, for example, like a household size of four, um, the cutoff is about sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, in yeah. Sacramento County. Yeah, in so Sacramento County. For each county. Mm -hmm. So depending on the county, um, the the income guidelines will change. Okay, it yeah. does. I'm sure of it. Yeah. So, uh, but you forgot one important and, thing, and the important thing is, and I knew you were about to say it. <laughs> Community Energy Efficiency and Solar Workshop. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. can go into detail about yeah. it. Yeah, so uh, one of the programs we're working on right now is through Energy Upgrade California, and we're one of 25 organizations who's a community ambassador um, to host and participate in a series of events and workshops to educate renters and homeowners on uh, things they can do to make their home more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're holding a workshop uh, next Thursday on July 7th in West Sacramento, the community library there, the Arthur Turner Community Library. And uh, we'll be teaching people small ways to save on their um, energy bill, save water, um, and uh, we'll also be giving away items for people to uh, start making their home more energy efficient right away. So we'll be giving away LED bulbs and power strips, shower timers, uh, and also, of course, talking about our low-income solar program, too, and how people giving more details on how people can qualify good, good, as well. Good. Well, uh, you, you must be, you're giving something away free, and it's <laughs> helping people who are low-income have a few more dollars in their pockets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's not very good, Becca. I like yeah. the idea. Have yeah. you been successful? Yes, absolutely. You know, a lot of people aren't aware of um, something as simple as changing out your bulbs, um, how much money that can save you over a year. Mm -hmm. And especially if uh, you have a smaller income, that's a larger proportion of your budget. So. Yeah, definitely. So, Sarah, you, you, you sent me, you told me your, your title was outreach. Outreach yeah. is like reaching out yeah. <laughs> to yeah. past, uh, um, you know, the walls of uh, not being successful to a, to a successful connection with people. Yeah. Is that a lot of fun? Yeah. Oh, I, oh my God, I love my job. Oh, I love cool. my job, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cool. I'm, um, so as an outreach coordinator, um, basically I just try to go out as much as possible into the communities and let people know about our program. I see. Um, and I'm also the one who will go to their house or um, just 
basically help them through the application process and um, answer any questions, you know, and so they can understand. And people don't have to clean up on the on inside of their house <laughs> no, no. before you come, do no, they? No, no, it's fine. I'm really, I'm really easygoing. So it's like, you know, you, you know, should come with pictures of your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, can I come yeah. in? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be scared of my apartment. <laughs> and our crews just work on the roof, so. Yeah, yeah. And our it's our very comfortable yeah. for us to come to the home. Yeah, oh, yeah the construction cool. crew, if, you know, when the families get installed, it's a two-day process. And mm -hmm. so the construction crew will come. And um, the only thing we ask of the homeowners during the install is that they provide lunch. Um, for oh, the construction. Well, cool. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because, that's yeah. very good. That's good. Yeah, that's yeah. a very wonderful thing. Yeah. So there's some kind of reciprocation there. Yeah, I like yeah. it. You'd be part of it. Yeah, yeah it's like because we're, we're a community-based organization. Yeah. We, we really like to get the homeowner involved. Yeah. You know, we don't want to feel like we're just coming into their house and, and you know, well, you we, like we want it to be like a organizations that, yeah. you know, because there are, you know, or people will come in and install bars for older folks uh, in the yeah. in the shower mm -hmm. yeah. and things like that or rebuild a door to make it yeah. easier to get through whatever yeah you know and I think that that's kind of it's, it's an important part of serving our community in um, in ways like energy or in ways like safety mm -hmm. and things like that and I think it's Definitely. important that organizations think that way yeah uh, even if they're commercial I had a commercial uh, organization in here uh, last week, and they think like a nonprofit community service organization. Mm -hmm. That's know, great. They're profit making, but you know, not so much as as they would if they didn't slow up and find community members who really need their services. Yeah. It was yeah. car repair. Exactly. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, and I thought that was an amazing, amazing piece of uh, uh, knowledge. You know, it gets mm -hmm. us closer to one another. Especially yeah. the lunches. Absolutely. Yeah, we love the lunches. <laughs> yeah, we work with really amazing families. Yeah. So Becca and Sarah, do you work as a team when you go out there? Oh, well, we have. Well, we do different types of work, but mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we do collaborate on certain things. Mm -hmm. Um, because Becca is really good at doing a lot of the media stuff, and I I do outreach, so I work directly with the clients. Mm -hmm. So usually, you know, if we want to have media mm -hmm. out for one of the installs, I'll work with Becca and. And if she needs, yeah, it's in, one of our ways yeah, to put the word out. Yeah, we, we, we work together. <laughs> so these here. are community members uh, uh, that go and install the uh, uh, photovoltaic cells on the roof. Yeah, we have um, our construction crew, and then uh, we also get help from volunteers and job trainees on every install we job do. Job trainers. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we need more of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, there should be solar cells everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, exactly. my goodness, I think it's a, an amazing uh, transition. So we actually have a slideshow to look at, and what is oh, that all awesome. about? Is this a mystery slideshow? I guess so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, mystery slide. Oh, look <laughs> yeah. at that. Yeah. So what is it? It looks like... That's um, one of our installs. So um, so some of our our staff is usually in the color of blue, uh -huh. and then the white staff are job trainees. So okay. they're... Um, like Becca mentioned, job trainees, they're volunteering so that they can, Yeah, I can you see know, the, training, the trainees to, yeah, are the ones skills. with the ropes attaching themselves to the roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, we make sure everyone's safe. the ones safe, with but, the yeah. wings on their backs. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I think definitely in our pictures you can see that we have a variety of people who come out, anywhere from our homeowners, um, come out and learn how to install. Uh, we have people who are actually trying to find a job in the industry and looking for skills. And we also have people who just want to come back and uh, give back to the community yeah. in which wow. they, they live. So Grid alternatives, sun yeah. power. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Sun power, I like it. Okay. So yeah. you two were walking down the street one day and you thought, what can we be when we grow up? <laughs> yeah. I guess, you know what, I wanted to do, um, well, when I got out of you know, school, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something with the environment yeah. and with the community. And then I found Grid Alternatives and I was like, Jackpot. This is, this is Jackpot. like, yeah, boom, it, was, boom, boom. it was exactly what I wanted and to you, do. And somebody said, hey, you, you want a job? <laughs> Yeah, I definitely I sought grid alternatives out. The idea of renewable energy technology and um, just helping community members well, is really helping. inspiring. Are you both going to be at the community energy efficiency and solar workshop? 
Uh, we might be, yeah, but might um, be. definitely we encourage anyone to come out. This is a no-cost event, too. So please join us um, again in West Sacramento at the Community Center next Thursday, 5.30 to 7.30. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have refreshments. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. You're going to meet yeah. some of our other good staff yeah, and good uh, learn more about our program and uh, energy efficiency tips. So you have a website, Grid Alternatives, G-R-I-D. A L T E is there a hyphen in there? No, no. No hyphen. It's just one. It's all one word. One grid word. alternatives with an S. Dot yeah. org. Um, and then if anyone wants to see if they can qualify, you can go to backslash qualify, gridalternatives.org uh -huh. backslash qualify. Um, if you wanted to get more information or a contact for our event coming up next week, you can go to our region's website. So it's gridalternatives.org backslash North Valley. Okay, <laughs> we'll just go to your website. <laughs> yeah, go there, you can find it. Yeah, backslash, when you get to backslash, <laughs> I get, get all crazy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's just fascinating that uh, California has, and I, obviously uh, the nation and Nicaragua, mm -hmm. has this program um, because it's, a, um, it's something I thought a lot of people, and I may have said this to you off uh, when we were in the office, uh, uh, people are they're just afraid to do solar because they think that the solar organizations, uh, businesses that provide solar um, are sharks, you mm -hmm. know? And so here's a, an organization that will look at your income and say, hey, you can get this free. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, because, so we're, we're big supporters of solar. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, you know, bigger companies who, um, who who give solar um, who are for profits they're still providing i mean solar is an awesome service and, mm -hmm. and you know we think no it's fantastic what. yeah no matter what um, but yeah our version of it is more specifically for low income so that's why it's um it's yeah, we're you trying know, to we're bring trying. in uh, families who wouldn't otherwise be yeah. able to afford it so yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, we definitely you know Everyone who's, we're all working towards similar goals, though, yeah. in deploying more renewable yeah. energy technologies. Really? Okay, well, I can't argue with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing, uh, amazing thing. And uh, I think over the next few years, there's going to be big changes in terms of uh, energy use and how we do things. Yeah. And, and it's great because, I mean, the program... Um, that we're doing here, it usually saves families about 75 to 80% on their electricity bill. Mm -hmm. So that's the average. So it cuts their bill by that much for 20 years because mm -hmm. the agreement's you know, yeah. for 20 wow. years. Yeah, in addition to uh, during w doing workshops with Energy Upgrade California, we also uh, work with our clients on energy efficiency too. So mm -hmm. um, we'll go and teach our clients. Um, <laughs> we have to say goodbye. Okay, okay. goodbye. Yeah. Sarah Schumann, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah. All right, wow, we got to go, folks. But we'll be back next week with uh, some more wonderful people just like these two ladies and we'll be talking about issues in your community with Livewire. I'm Ray Tatter. See you then, 5 p.m. live on Wednesdays.